We're going to talk very briefly about sharpening and setting the bench plane. This is a Stanley number four. It could be a record number four. It could be any make, old or new. It could even be a wooden plane. It could be any type of plane that's used as a bench plane. And um, this is a bevel down plane. That's what all the bench planes are. And so we're going to take out the iron. When would I sharpen? I sharpen virtually all the time. You take a, a plane, you're using it on oak, you're using it on pine, you hit knots, you hit hard knots that you get in, say, something like spruce. It takes the edge off very rapidly and, and that's why we sharpen. So in a given day, I might sharpen my plane four or five times depending on the wood that I'm planing and depending on how I'm using the plane. Um, so let's take a look at this. The plane, the body of the plane we don't need to look at, we just need to look at the cutting iron. And I'm going to take this away from the cap iron and look at this edge here. Can you see, uh, this plane has already been initialized. Um, I've used it for several years. It has a, a massive camber on here, it's very big radius on here and it's had the corners removed and that's what we're going to maintain. So this is a maintenance mode sharpening session that I might take. You can see here I have my sharpening stones right by the bench, they're ready to go every time. And I've got my coarse fine uh, and super fine here. So this is 250, somewhere around 600, and this one's around 1200. They do change as the stones get used more and more to become finer and smoother. When I sharpen here, I spread this fluid, and this is just glass cleaner over the surface. And here, I'm going to put my plain iron on here. And I feel for this edge, I roll it just a little bit and I want to start here at 30 degrees, somewhere around 30. The iron is actually initially, um, the angle on the bevel was 25 degrees, but now I've established it with a camber. I'm starting here at 30, as I push forward here, the water moves out of the way like this. This edge actually is open. There's a, a lip there I can get my fingernail under. So as I pull back, I'm back at 30, I hit the, the actual cutting edge, push forward like this, and I can even exaggerate this as long as I don't go higher than 30 degrees, as long as I keep at 30. So watch what happens. Now when I rub the plain iron forward, I'm starting on the 30. The natural progression of the arm opens up the edge so I'm actually getting as much on the heel or more on the heel as I am on the cutting edge. So here is my normal motion. I work across the width of the plate. I overhang slightly on the side to make sure I get all the diamonds or all the abrasive if you're using any other type of stone. Sometimes I'll make a long oval circular motion like this, which I like. That seems to take the swarf out of the way don't hesitate to come in with a little bit more moisture just to take the swarf off the surface and it keeps the cutting edge clear of the the cutting surface of the plate clear from swarf and stops the build up and clogging once i've got that let's take a look over on this side i've got this first level of braiding done and um, what I haven't done is I haven't dealt with the corners here. These corners need to be slightly rounded or beveled. I prefer a round. So what I do is I lift up here when I'm at this level in the, in the sharpening, push at that level and then drop, drop, drop with every hand, with every motion. And then I lift up this side. I'm pushing at that slight angle and then I start drop, 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 dropping. And now I have got the outside corners done. And that works, that's got my initial level sharpening. Here I do exactly the same. No micro bevels. I don't think micro bevels do anything for my work. I don't have to think about it. I want to get back to my woodworking. So I'm just on the bevel, the main bevel again here. 
and I'm polishing out all the striations that were impressed into the material, into the steel, with that first level of braiding. Now I've got that done. I've got exactly the same. So this is looking a little bit more polished. It's got none of the striations from this coarse level. It's at a medium level. Back on the stone, lift up, move it back and forth a few times and then start drop, drop, dropping your hand till you hit the main length of the uh, plain iron edge. Same on this side. Dropping, dropping, dropping. And I do, I had a burr all the way along this edge from this one. Now I've got it from this one. I do exactly the same on this last level here of this abrading. So now I've angled this. Can you see how this is angled to my body? A lot of people might tell you to go this way. Very difficult to get the kind of pressure you want to abrade this steel. This way, this aligns with my body. It's not some magical presentation of the angle to the uh, work, to the surface. This is purely a comfort to the body and it gives me the maximum pressure. This triangular shoulder going down to this um, edge here gives me incredible strength and it gives me the stamina I need. So I'm going all the way through that second level of braiding now to the final level of braiding on the stones. The whole bevel again, so I'm getting my macro camber on here, then I lift up, drop, lift up and drop. So the whole of those outside bevels here are all abraded to exactly the same way. There's a bird all the way along that edge. I want to get rid of that. Watch this now. This face has already been polished out. I don't have to do that again. So I flip over and I simply pull and that pushes the burr. Can you see it right there? I can see it. It's got a, an, a wire burr that came off straight away, right on the end of my finger. So I just peel that off out of the way. Slide this out of the way. And then I go to a strop. A strop is just a piece of leather glued to a piece of plywood or MDF, anything. It doesn't have to be flat. It doesn't have to be straight or anything because the leather itself cushions this. What's this now? I don't know. Can you see that this, this plate, this level of polishing hasn't really polished it? Now, this would cut perfectly fine if you wanted to cut with that it would work fine but watch what happens now the heel of my hand goes on here this hand is gripping this way so the fingers come around the three fingers underneath thumb on the opposite side and then this finger equalizes the pressure of these three fingers and I push like this or better still put the heel of the hand on here get a good firm grip so it doesn't slip and pull this about 30 times And that will polish out the bevel so you end up with this beautifully polished mirror-like finish on the bevel. And then we're going to get the corners, so we're lifting up on the corners. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to place it flat on this now I don't spend too much time on this face because it's already been polished but it does help if there's any residue of a burr on there it does help to take that off. Now that's ready for work too so now I'm going to load this into the cap iron here left hand right hand flip over make a cross with it flip this one around pull it in here this is the safest pattern I've ever used for establishing this back together putting this this is a cutting iron assembly about two to three millimeters from the end it works best periodically you want to check yourself that you are 
sharpening the edge of the plain iron uh, square. Loading this back in here. Drop this in here. Watch this. Let it rest onto this. See this center, this rectangle in the middle? This is your lateral adjustment. And you want to make sure that that, lock, that settles down on there and then just rock this from side to side like this. Then center that. Take your lever cap here. You shouldn't need any adjusting on this. Just press this and it should clunk down like that. And that's it. And my initial sight test is just to make sure that the plane iron is not protruding past the surface. Don't lay your plane on the side. It's not good practice. It often readjusts your plane. To set the plane is very simple. You just need a thin piece of wood. Just keep this piece of wood around. You'll use it all the time. When you start the plane, it may not be set right. For instance, I'm getting a fairly even shaving here. Let me just take it. See, I'm getting a lighter pass on this side here, my right. If I take a shaving, this is a thin shaving. If I go to the opposite side, I'm getting a thicker shaving. This is definitely thicker. So I move this lever, the lateral adjustment lever, towards the side that's bringing the thickest shaving. But I only move it very, I, I take up the slack and then I move it maybe three or four millimeters, that's all. See, those sounds are the same to me, so I can hear the thickness. So working from one side to the other, now I withdraw the iron a little bit more. And the shavings get thinner, so I go a little bit more. And I keep going thinner just to check the thickness. So now I'm down to, this is a thousandth of an inch. There's another thousandth. So these are about the same and I can keep going till I get shavings like this, fractions of a thou. And I've got nothing on this side, which means I'm a fraction of a thou out. Now I'm the same. This is identical. You can't really, these are the shavings that I'm getting now. They're the same size, same thickness. And now I can plane with this as much as I need to. I can set the, dip, the depth of the cut here, work across the piece of wood, and I've got no step down. This feels like silk. And that's what I do three or four, five, six times a day, whatever it takes. Sometimes. I'll hit a knot and then I'll see a break in the surface. So I have to resharpen. I just have to. I can't carry on with the plane that way unless I'm working on a garden gate or something like that. But you sharpen to task. So constantly you need your plane in perfect, pristine condition. You want it to do the work. That's how I do my plane.